Right, you to share with King King Nazu. And we got to talk. We got to talk about some Dragon Ball. Because what's happening lately is just... Oh, God. What has this man done? So... Um, if you've been keeping up with the latest Dragon Ball Super manga chapters, um, you know there's been quite a bit of, shall we say, alarming things that happened. And I'm quite concerned. No, 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 we're not concerned. I'm downright outraged by it. Now, if you've been following me for a long time, right, long time now, you know that I am not a fan of the Dragon Ball Super manga done by Toyotaro. I love the Dragon Ball manga done by Akira Toyama, like the Dragon Ball Super anime, but the Dragon Ball Super manga by Toyotaro, ugh, I just can't stand that thing. Ugh. I mean, the, the nonsensical changes, the contradictions to what Toriyama established, the complete retcon of care. I mean, not rec, not retcons. The complete assassination of characters, personalities, and development. I, it just irritates me to no end. I'm just, and these latest chapters have not helped. I was going to wait until another chapter to talk about this, but after the stunts Toyotaro's pull, I feel it's finally time to give the Dragon Ball Super manga the ass whooping it deserves. So, one of the things that really pissed me off about Toyotaro's manga is that he makes unnecessary changes and it all started back with the Shampa saga of uh, and I feel that he partly did this just to stay relevant because the anime had gotten ahead and thus people wouldn't be all too invested if he was just not making too many, too many drastic changes from what the anime did. And the first thing he did was say, bring back Super Saiyan God. The problem with that was that not only is Super Saiyan God doing well against Hit, that kind of undermined him, and it also kind of also he also kind of nerfed Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan, uh, just to make just to make Super Saiyan God look good. But it also goes against what Toriyama originally said about Super Saiyan God back when he did the Battle of Gods movie, which was that it was just really a one-time thing. That was supposed to power up the other part parts of the Super Saiyans as well as the Saiyans base, which just meant that Goku's uh, base, once he trained it, was going to be essentially equal to Super Saiyan God, and the Super Saiyan forms would just stack on on that, which was a really interesting idea. It made the uh, other forms a little bit more relevant, and especially when the kid around said that he, Goku was going to focus more on improving just the Regular Super Saiyan instead of trying to do Super Saiyan, find a Super Saiyan form past Super Saiyan 3, which was made it interesting and kind of lets the Super Saiyan God Super Saiyan. But no, no, just bring back Super Saiyan God nonsensically. And it, it's made worse by the fact that the anime started to do it too. And even more so that they did it with Vegeta. Yeah, Vegeta has Super Saiyan God, too. I mean, it would have made sense if he had done the ritual during the uh, Future Trunks. I mean, it wouldn't make that much sense because he already has Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan. And if he doesn't need Super Saiyan God. I mean, which he apparently got from training with Whis. But, as is, there's no explanation for uh, how he got Super Saiyan God. It just... And he's and apparently he's using it because it drains less stamina. And honestly, I just felt that's a little bit insulting. 
And then we get into more nonsense, what he's doing, of uh, contradicting how time travel works, which, how he explains it, you essentially can't even time travel uh, back to a pres back to a previous date. Um, I forgot how specifically how he explained it, but it's basically that if a day passes in the present or something, and you you can't go back to that time, so basically you just made it Maybe the time travel doesn't work. And then that's just complete other nonsense. Uh, and then we get into things like that really pissed me off is how he's mishandling characters. Well, specifically Goku. Now, contrary to his belief that, I mean, that he says that he's a go his favorite character is Goku. At least that's what I believe is what he said. I honestly don't believe that. I honestly don't think he's a Goku fan. At least not a real one. I mean, if you compare what Akira Toriyama's version of Goku was, and as well as a little bit from the anime, and compare it to Toyotaro's Goku, it's jarring. The Goku from the Dragon Ball Super manga is a dick. Not not a likable dick, but a, a genuine asshole who I can't relate to. And he fits. He feels more like the Goku that the Dragwell fan base had made up. I mean, based on their ignorant cons uh, preconceived notions of what Goku is, he's very. He can be willfully. I mean, he's very ignorant. Uh, way put. Way more than Goku should be. Uh, he didn't know how babies were born. He apparently wasn't there when Gohan was born, despite the ma the original manga suggesting otherwise. Uh, and he's more interested in that than his time with his family. And Vegeta, of all people, calls him a bad father. Though that would be pretty hypocritical considering what you've done back in the cell side with your baby, Vegeta. And then we had, there was also this one time where Goku was fighting Future Trunks. And Future Trunks Super Saiyan 2 form was equal to Super Saiyan 3. Because he just had to raise this power of his Super Saiyan 2. Even though that's not how that works, Super Saiyan 2 is basically a multiplier, and, and you have to, in order to make that stronger, you have to make your base stronger. Which means that Future Trunks' base would have to be stronger than Goku's base, which, why is he coming to him for help for against Goku Black? Ugh. But anyway, there was this bit where Goku was getting, struggling, and he decides to quickly turn to Super Saiyan God knock Future Trunks from the beh from the back and before Future Trunks recognize can get a situ uh, understanding of what just happened, he goes back to Super Saiyan 3 just to make an impl implication that he somehow beat Future Trunks in Super Saiyan 3 which even Vegeta, Beerus, and Whis said that was dirty. That is totally not Goku. Goku would never do something that underhanded. <coughs> and if you don't believe me now, uh, recently he's even said, uh, before the Tournament of Power started, he had, Toritaro had Goku s s tell Krillin that uh, his best way to be useful is to just run, a run away and just like run out of the time. That's basically his strategy. Running hiding. That is such a disrespect to Goku as well as his relationship with Krillin. He knows that Krillin is not is more than just a person who can run away. He knows that he's brave at heart, and despite being oh overwhelmed by the odds, despite being scared a lot, he will do what it takes to at least stand up to stand to what stand up to what he's afraid of, and that's what made the the mini arc in the in the Dragon Ball Super anime that dealt with that issue made so made it so powerful. It really understood what Krillin was all about. 
So, yeah, this is just so unlike Goku. I can't even... Much like the Dragon Ball Evolution version of Goku, I can't even consider Dra Toyota's version of Goku, Goku. I just can't. I refuse. I refuse to call this... To acknowledge him as Goku. Uh, and it just... It just kept getting worse. I mean... We had that whole... Future Trunks being irrelevant in his own saga. Uh, him contradicting how the Batar fusions work. Just to add some pseudo-tension. Uh, against Merge Zamasu. I, I go more into this, but I'm, I have a short, limited time. Uh, Goku inexplicably doing the Hakai. Even though he's not a god of destruction and he didn't see Beerus do it. But the... The excuse that he's all oh, beers do it off panel. Oh yeah, that's that's some seriously lazy writing. But apparently the manga is supposed to be better written than the anime, and it's supposed to have better power skin, which is a joke at this point because these last few chapters in the Tournament of Power we saw Kale go into Super Saiyan Berserk and was able to. Whoop Frieza's ass. He had struggled a little bit with Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan Goku, who's supposed to be equal to Golden Frieza, and then gets overwhelmed by Kale later on. And then when Kale feeds with Khalifa and becomes Kefla, she's able to defeat the Pride Troopers. And before she uh, feeds into Kefla, Kale single handedly. Eliminated four universes worth of fighters, uh, and everybody's just okay with it because that was the fire was the fodder people. Yeah, sure they were fodder, but you could at least show them doing something and maybe actually have them de develop. I mean, that's what the anime did. At least some of these characters got the de character development, but no, uh, everybody got wiped out, rushed. Same with a little bit with a. Uh, with the Z52, Android 18 has gone. Rushed. Piccolo got eliminated early. He didn't even get to fight the Namekians like he did in the anime, which was rushed. And the Namekians got erased too with, by Kale. So now is that a big wasted opportunity. It's also rushed. Uh, just so many squander opportunities. But back to Kefla. She was able to defeat the uh, five of the Pride Troopers. And even uh, Jiren was a had Jiren a tad bit worried, but when Kefla throws a key blast, Gohan in his base form is able to deflect it, and the next chapter is able to fight Kefla to a standstill. Kefla, a Patara fusion a, of a two universe six scenes, one of them was stronger than Golden Frieza. And Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan Goku. And, and the argument is that they were both repressed. Dumbasses! Everyone was repressing that fight. Everyone is repressed in this tournament. Which also doesn't make any lot of sense because Kefla, I mean Kale, who's going berserk and doesn't have control, is uh, eliminating opponents indiscriminately, somehow has, has enough control to... <coughs> I mean, someone has enough control to uh, keep herself from killing each other? No. No. That doesn't make any sense. And we got other people performing mental gymnastics saying that the reason that Gohan was able to uh, tie with Kefa was, uh, was either because he trained his base so hard that he reached that level and by, by training the either the gravity chip or the gravity room or the hyperbolic time chip, I forget which, and the other being uh, Kale. I mean, Kefla is somehow weaker than Kale, so somehow Kale fusing with Khalifa made her weaker. No, no, fuck that bullshit. And don't even get me started on Roshi doing a move similar to Ultra Instinct and dodging Jin. It's so stupid. Uh, I'll, I'll continue this next.